The Toyota Hi-Ace has become a bit of an automotive icon in Australia. Over the 40 years it's been on sale, more than 335,000 of them have been sold. But no one really wants to buy a Hi-Ace, do they? It's a box on wheels, typically white and most often unwashed. And for the past 15 years, it's barely changed. It's been the go-to option for tradies and couriers, and over the last 15 years of the previous generation version, it was number one for pretty much the whole time. But now there's more competition than ever. There's Hyundai, there's Ford, Renault, Volkswagen, even Peugeot is in on the action. Everybody wants their slice of the van pie. So how does this new generation high ace stack up? And why does it now have a bonnet? Well, the bonnet, I can answer that. That's where the engine is now. You don't sit on top of it anymore, and that's a good thing because it improves the comfort, it also improves access to the engine, and improves safety. There's a lot to talk about on safety. We'll get to that soon, but first, let's have a look at the design and that nose. The previous generation High Ace was a bit mean looking, it was unapologetically boxy and it aged pretty well too. It's not long a vehicle goes a decade and a half without any major changes. And this new generation version, well, it's a pretty big departure from the old one. You can get a regular panel van, a crew van, a bus, and you can get the choice of a petrol V6 engine or the familiar 2.8 litre turbo diesel, which is also used in the Hilux, Fortuna, and even the Prado. Read the review for a full breakdown of the model range, you'll find it in the description below. And while you're there, don't forget to hit subscribe. So not only is this diesel engine considerably gruntier than its predecessor, there's a lot more power and torque, but it's also a lot more refined. You don't feel the engine shaking underneath you like you did in the previous one. The engine is, it builds pace really well. And while it might be a little bit gruff when it's used in the Hilux, it doesn't feel too rough and tumble in this application. And I think that's a credit to Toyota's engineers who have done a lot of work to make this high ace considerably more refined than its predecessor. Even little things like the leather lined steering wheel. In the old one, it was a hard plastic wheel. And that makes a big difference. You're gonna be grabbing it every day the seat comfort's excellent. I imagine the durability of the seats will be even better because you won't be sort of scrambling on top of it to get out of the van day in, day out, or hour in, hour out, or every 15 minutes, depending on what you do for work. Make what you will of the design, but the good news for buyers is that there's still plenty of choice. And on this particular model here, there's plenty of accessories available as well. This is the long wheelbase version, which is actually the shorter wheelbase of the two versions that you can get. And it's still got 6.2 cubic meters of cargo space, which is heaps. And it's also got a longer wheelbase, so it's more comfortable. And because it's got that bonnet, it's safer as well. There's plenty of safety stuff that we need to talk about, but we'll get to that soon. Let's have a look in the cargo area. One of the High Ace's advantages is that it's rear wheel drive, but still has a really low floor load height. Great for loading and unloading. There are multiple tie down points, and depending on how you spec it, you can get different floor and wall coverings too. The big thing about the High Ace's cargo area this time around is that it's a lot wider. It is shorter as well, but you've got so much more width to play with that you can easily fit a couple of pallets in here. And in the super long wheelbase version, which has 9.3 cubic meters of cargo space, you get wider doors as well. So you can pallet in from the side and also from the back, but there's no barn doors yet, which could be a problem for serious tradies out there, or pallet carriers, couriers, whoever you might be. But one of the niftier things that Toyota has thought of is this internal ladder rack. That's right, you won't get wet, it won't get wet, it won't get stolen. So it means you're using space that you wouldn't otherwise use in the back of your van as well. It's pretty nifty stuff. Now, let's take a look in front of the partition. Vans like these are more than just a way of getting to the work site. They can perform their duty as a lunchroom, a meeting room, or even a space just to relax for a minute or two. 
So it's important that the cabin is comfortable and well thought out. And in this generation version of the Hi Ace, it is light years ahead in terms of comfort. Getting in and out is simple. You don't have to jump over a wheel arch. You basically just slide into a seat, like in a SUV, for example. And everything is presented so much better and so much more logically, plus the seating position. I mean, it's so different. It's really comfortable, you've got good adjustment, there's a lot of nice features in this cabin that you just didn't get in the previous generation version. Plus there's good storage as well, you've got big bottle holders in the dashboard, you've got cup holders, there's nothing in between the seats but that's not that big of a deal. There is no overhead storage in this regular long wheelbase version because it doesn't have the high roof, but generally things are pretty good in here. The media screen is a big improvement on the previous generation version as well, and it will come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto later this year. And if you buy a Hi Ace before it's available, you can get it retrofitted for free. There's also the obvious things like Bluetooth phone and audio streaming. You've also got digital radio, FM, AM, a CD player, and also there's sat nav across every model in the range. One of the neater additions to the High Ace range is this really smart rear view mirror. So it's an optional mirror, which basically allows you to switch between the standard interior rear view mirror and a camera on the back of the tailgate. So it looks back at the road behind you and feeds the live feed to the mirror in front of you. So if you do have stuff in the back of your van or you've got a bulkhead or whatever it may be, it means you can still see what's happening behind you, even if you can't see what's happening behind you. So the interior of the new Hi Ace, it's a massive improvement. Is it a massive improvement on the road? Let's find out. I got the chance to drive the previous generation version of the Hi Ace at the same time as I was driving this new generation version. And I've got to say, the first thing I noticed, apart from the ease of getting in and out, was the width of this vehicle. It is nearly 20 centimetres wider and it feels it on the road as well. It feels more planted, more stable, less prone to crosswinds, and that's all good stuff because the existing one could get blown around pretty easily and it wasn't necessarily very comfortable. This new version, it steers really nicely. The ride is greatly improved. They've reworked the rear suspension completely and it's still a leaf spring setup, but it does have longer leaves so there's more travel to the rear more comfort involved in that as well but also it's got a longer wheelbase and that helps spread the load over the chassis a lot better yeah it's a lot bigger too you uh, you're looking at nearly half a meter longer and that could be a problem for you depending on what your needs are as a van buyer. If you're looking predominantly to get around the city, that could rule out some parking spaces for you. And I mentioned this to Toyota and they basically said there's no plans for anything smaller, which I think is a bit of a shame. But having said that, it carries its size really well. And with the new engines, the 2.8 litre turbo diesel in the one I'm driving right now, which is familiar from the Hilux and the Fortuna, and it is quite a good engine. It's got a good amount of torque. It's very smooth in the way that it works. The six speed automatic transmission works very well. And also it now has stop start. So the efficiency factor should be good too. Not so good on efficiency will be the V6 petrol, although it is great on power. It's a lot of fun and I hate to say that, but it is fun for a van and particularly with a six speed manual transmission. There's also an automatic, of course, but I reckon that the petrol could be a real surprise hit when it comes to high ace buyers. It is the most affordable version after all, although you will have to spend that money on fuel because it's going to use quite a bit. All that aside, is this new high ace a big improvement over its predecessor? It's beyond words. This is like a completely different car from a completely different brand. It's almost unrecognizable as a high ace as we've come to know it. And that is good news for buyers, because this could well be the best van in the segment. It's got all the chops to do it. Now, you might be wondering about the safety stuff that I spoke about earlier, and here is your rundown. Standard across all models is auto emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and a reversing camera with parking sensors. 
It's got the best possible five-star NCAP crash score for 2019 as well. And of course, the other thing you need to think about when it comes to buying a Toyota work van is the ownership experience. Now, Toyota has had a pretty good track record in the last two years or so of improving its service intervals to 12 months and 15,000 Ks, but that's not the case for any version of the Hiace. You still have to go back to the dealer every six months or 10,000 Ks. Now, that might matter to you or it might not. I would think that it could matter to some people because there are competitors that offer up to 30,000 kilometers between intervals. So keep that in mind. But thankfully, there is now a five year unlimited kilometer warranty, which can be extended to seven years for the drivetrain if you get logbook servicing filled out. All that adds up to an even more impressive ownership credential than the previous version, which was already the best van in the segment for resale value. So, the total cost of ownership for this new generation version should be pretty good. How it stacks up against its competitors in terms of load carrying ability and drivability, well, you'll have to wait until later this year when we put it against some of its most credentialed rivals in a big van comparison test. I can't wait for that. The new generation Hiace, it's been 15 years in the making and let me tell you, this has been worth the wait. From safety to refinement to comfort to technology, it's got pretty much everything you can want if you're looking for this size of van. It has grown a lot and that could put some buyers off, but if this is what you're after, then you should put it on your shopping list. And while you're there, don't forget to hit subscribe.